Hello fellow humans, my name is Edelbrack Smith and today we're going to be talking about the partnership between Steam and GeForce Now. Strap in because we're getting speculative. In the year of calamity, 12,020 of the human era, two forces announced a coming together, a beneficial symbiosis that would benefit both entities. At least until one of them inevitably turned on the other one, but we haven't gotten there yet. Let's look at our two great forces. On one hand, you have Steam, the de facto PC gaming store. There are others, including physical locations and new computers competitors that are throwing money at everyone to try and carve a piece of Steam's empire for themselves, but when most humans think about PC gaming, they think about Valve Steam. This wasn't always the case. At one time, Steam was an upstart store that used anticipation and love of its critically acclaimed games to force users to download a, at the time, pretty bad program. Think the origin store, but far worse. From that humbling beginning, in the year 12,003 of the human era, the universe watched passively as the seed that was Steam grew to conquer the PC gaming world. As it grew, it added features that improved the service for both end customers and developers, including achievements, microtransactions, user-created content, social networking, video streaming, digital rights management, cloud storage, and more. This constant, steady advancement meant that as competitors launched, they either had to launch with a fraction of Steam's features or spend years longer in development with no guarantee of recouping costs. This will be important later. Ten years after the launch of Steam, NVIDIA released the service that would eventually become GeForce Now. At this time, it was a companion to the NVIDIA Shield, an Android-based digital media player. In the year 12,017, NVIDIA launched the game streaming service GeForce Now into beta. This service allows users to access a computer remotely to play PC games. Unlike other services, like Google Stadia, GeForce Now doesn't sell games. Instead, it allows users to sign into other storefronts, like Steam, and play games they already own through those other services. This this was an unmitigated win for customers, who would continue to buy video games from their favorite stores, assured that the services would not be shutting down anytime soon, while being able to play them on different devices from high-end computers to cheap laptops and even their cell phones. Sadly, publishers did not feel the same. GeForce Now is a way for customers to get more value out of the games they buy, but publishers wanted a cut for doing absolutely nothing. This service would hurt publishers by preventing them from selling stripped down, garbage versions of their games on mobile. Who would buy the crappy microtransaction filled version when they could play the full version that they already own on something like GeForce Now? So, publishers began pulling their games from NVIDIA's service. And this wasn't a one-time exodus either. It continued to happen to handfuls of games throughout the months, and it was becoming a problem. Customers would buy games that they couldn't run locally because they could play them through GeForce Now, only to have those games disappear from the service with no idea if they would ever return. In May of the year 12,020, NVIDIA made a final purge. They would only support games if the publisher opted in. This led to nearly 100 games leaving the service in one go, but it provided a more stable selection of games for users moving forward. A painful win, but a win nonetheless. There had been rumors floating around of Steam creating a streaming service of their own. Hints of this were found in the code, and people became assured that this would truly end GeForce Now. Steam having its own streaming service natively supported would make NVIDIA's effort pointless. But that didn't exactly happen. As I correctly predicted in this video, Valve decided to partner with NVIDIA to support GeForce Now as an option for their customers. This allows Steam to continue operating as normal without spending countless dollars and years developing a streaming service the world over. It's an expensive and difficult thing to do, so leveraging a service that's already doing it just makes sense. It increases value for Steam's customers by providing additional ways to play, and it increases revenue for Valve since people can now buy games so that their PC could never play without something like GeForce Now. On GeForce's side, they could now integrate directly with the dominant force in PC gaming, increasing their visibility and reach. With the free option, users are more likely to experiment with game streaming through an app they already trust that they've already bought all their games on. Steam, meanwhile, has said that it will support additional streaming services that want to integrate in the future, though currently there aren't a lot of options. Perhaps overseas and in markets like China, other streaming services will rise to dominate. And so we have reached Symbiosis, a mutually beneficial coming together of two organisms. Steam will leverage its coverage and connections to push publishers to allow their games to be streamed on GeForce Now and other services. GeForce Now will get more eyes on their product, get more products in their service, increase subscriptions, and provide additional value to Steam's customers. It is a win-win, and they'll live happily ever after, until one of them stabs the other in the back and uses their bloody carcass to reach even greater heights. 
You see, this relationship is not one that can last. Oh, it'll exist for many years, I'm sure, perhaps even a decade or more. But neither Steam nor GeForce Now are stupid, and neither is blind. Game streaming is the future, though that future may be coming slower than we hoped for. A world in which most users only own dumb terminals, cheap devices that can't do much more than a cell phone on their own, but can connect to streaming services and do things that no home machine ever could, is the future that's on the way. There are many hurdles, and it will stumble at times, but progress keeps moving forward. Streaming services provide anti-piracy, digital rights management, anti-cheat, anti-modding, thus supporting DLC sales, and more to the publishers. It provides instant access to games from nearly any device, all using the same saves and with the same great content, to customers. Why only buy Linux games because you use a Linux operating system when you can buy any game and stream it to your computer? Sure, right now it's still not great, but it keeps getting better. So, streaming will continue to gain popularity. Let's take this to the extreme and say that in two decades, 70% of PC gamers will be playing their games on GeForce Now. A not unrealistic number, seeing as how the advent of streaming drastically lowers the barrier to entry for PC gaming, and allows users with only cell phones to get in on the action. So, let's say 70% of PC gamers are playing on GeForce Now, but Nvidia still only makes money on their subscription? Valve continues to make 30% on each game sale, even though those games are played nearly exclusively on GeForce Now? Well, at some point, Nvidia is going to think, hey, why don't we just sell games directly? At this point, we've got the pull and the trust with publishers, we can increase our revenue drastically and cut out the Steam middleman. This makes economic sense. Once GeForce Now no longer needs Steam, it will become a parasite, leeching users and purchases until Steam is a shriveled husk of what it once was. And it'll be too late for Steam to build out servers and compete, just like it is extremely difficult and costly to build a PC gaming store to compete with Steam Now, as it already has so many features and so much mindshare. But Valve aren't fools, as I said. They see the future and what it could lead to. As GeForce Now is not perfect and its coverage isn't ubiquitous, Steam will see certain areas where GeForce Now isn't ready, perhaps overseas or in certain parts of the country. Maybe New York is a hotbed of streaming and Nvidia isn't buying more servers fast enough to support the growth. Steam adds a few servers here and there, it isn't competing with GeForce Now, just supplementing it and other services, just providing more value for their customers in areas that need it. Meanwhile, they're getting information, experience, and slowly building out their own streaming servers the world over. As the years go on, Steam streaming becomes an option even where GeForce Now works, even when GeForce Now works better, because they're just giving more options to their customers. At some point though, Steam streaming, possibly called something like Steam Pipelines, is just as common and mostly as good as Nvidia's service. At some point, Valve think, why are we letting these subscriptions go to Nvidia? We have just as good a service, it's part of our company and integrated with Steam even closer than GeForce Now. What if Nvidia does something we don't like, something our customers don't like? We should really control our future. And just like that, they abandon GeForce Now in the areas where Steam streaming has coverage. Maybe they continue to work with them and others in foreign markets, but the writing is on the wall and the damage has been done to GeForce Now. Meanwhile, Steam users don't lose access to any of their games since they've been buying them through Steam anyway. Throughout this video, I have explained how we got where we are, and, though I've made many assumptions, my belief on two of the possible futures that are likely to arise. But maybe I'm wildly wrong. Maybe Valve buys GeForce Now, or Nvidia buys Steam, or both go under because Ubisoft creates a holodeck and puts everyone out of business. Maybe every publisher creates their own streaming service for just their games, though that would be unlikely to last for very long. Time is a twisting, roiling riptide in space, grabbing the unprepared and flinging them along its uncontrollable, unpredictable path. We can only build a raft and strive to remain above water as time moves on, and attempting to see where we're going is a pivotal step in making sure that we don't smash into the unseen rocks. Do you think Valve will build out its own streaming service on top of others? Do you think another streaming service will rise up and replace GeForce Now before it can get on its feet? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out this video from Kurtzkazat if you're curious as to why I keep using strange year numbers. Keep your heads above water, fellow humans. Edelbrack Smith, signing out.